All right. Are you sure that's the only problems we need to discuss? No. I don't think so. I have I have a funny feeling that some of you didn't even start it yet. One more check. Oh, okay. So I'm glad you didn't ask that. I almost forgot. Almost forgot. I gave you your point total. What is it out of? 1,770. Oh. We have 140 more points to go because you got 40 points for the homework. This comes 10 points now. Um. And 100 points for the test. So there's 140. So in the end, there's going to be plus 140. That would be 910. And points. you get one point bonus? Yes! But we fill the test. Ah! <laughs> no. Wait, it's okay. Okay, wait, let me look, let me look at this. Let me look at this. Oh, damn it. He didn't know that. Hey, look at number one. It's just like the problem we did on the quiz, yeah? You, yeah. you are going to do that. You're going to have to prove to me you can do it. Um, yeah, just look at our homework. Look at number three. You have to draw the graphs on your own. If you don't have a graph, it's going to be minus points. Number four, I give you the graphs. Okay, you know what the problem is? Let's do 4A. People don't know where to go to the... What is the problem? So, you have to come up with the points of intersection on your own to get the limits of integration. I'm not going to give you the points of intersection. So, no, honestly, okay, you can. A check. Go. No, actually, you can. Yeah. Points of intersection. Yeah. The points come up pretty nice with the party. Boy, boy, if you think about it, if it's a trig function, it's got to be like yeah. pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 4, or something yeah. like that. It's pretty. Uh, so yes, if you want to guess, you can. <laughs> Set them equal. Yeah. Set them equal. <laughs> okay, but if you want to make sure you're you correct, like that. you like point them with substitution. <laughs> Identicize. If you don't know your double angle identities, I'm just shaking my head. Stop the crinkle. I mean, every test on for AB, I give them a double angle problem because they just, I don't know why they don't know. Because yeah, of all the identities you got to know on the AP exam, double angle is the one that comes up a lot. Yeah. Since it looks like it intersects right at the last little dip, you can claim, can't just say that for something, like, find a negative value. That so that's negative pi over 2. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can. Did you hear what Yoshida said? He said, since they intersect over there, right there, then that should be negative pi over 2 because that's where sine reaches its minimum, right? And then, therefore, that one there has to be pi over 6. Why? Because if this is pi over 2, look at this. This is drawn on a calculator. Everything is drawn to scale. If this is pi over 2, then that is one third of it, so that has to be pi over six. <laughs> That's called guessing and checking, baby. <laughs> That's next level guessing and checking, not tram level. <laughs> <laughs> okay, however, <laughs> if you want to make sure, no, that's perfectly fine as long as it's correct. <laughs> so sine x is either equal to one half or negative one. So x equals pi over six, five pi over six, or three pi over two, right? No, but Mr. Park, I told you, I thought you said it was negative pi over 2. Yeah, that's because 3 pi over 2, if you subtract 2 pi from it, don't you get negative pi over 2? Hell yeah. And notice that that point of intersection is to the left of the y-axis, so it should be negative. Because I gave that problem on the A-B test, and you'd be surprised how many people, the two limits of integration are positive. <laughs> Cannot. So these are your limits of integration, and then you go top minus bottom. Which one's on the top? The cosine one, right? Yeah. Cosine 2x minus sine x. And if you don't write this dx, you're going to get penalized. Penalized? Two. You guys can take it from there, right? <laughs> don't even write it. It goes until the end. <laughs> oh, by the way, on the quiz, that reminds me. Some of you, you know, on the last problem or the last two, you didn't write the integral. Now, when you do this on the AP exam and you have your calculator, it's usually worth two points. You're going to get one point for the integral and one point for the answer. So, it, so if you don't write the integral, you lost 50% of the problem. You have to show your work. How much is the work? What percent, percent is a five? Yeah, you get it right, then you get the one point for the answer, but what about the one point for the integral? You're not going to get that one. Okay. What percent do you need for five? What about, can everybody do number five? Because yeah. number five and number 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 
eight are the same problem except number five, you don't have a calculator, and number eight, you will have a calculator. So you have to be able to do it both ways. You know? Can you go over it? Which one? Number five. Did you try it? Did you can't ask. I tried it. Well, why don't we just discuss number eight? Because then it's the same. Thing. It's the same concept. Okay. But you have you can't you can't use a calculator. Okay, let's just do seven through ten then. And then what about the length of the curve? Everybody can do that. Sure. You sure? Length of curve. Where's that? And. Okay, well, maybe we should go over it. You want to do number six for fun? Yeah. This one's easy, people. Yeah, I should do this. Okay, I'm going to do it. I don't know. Okay, to find the length of curve, the first thing you've got to do is find the derivative. Labachani, what's the derivative of natural log secant x? One over... I'll read it off my paper. Okay. One over secant x times secant x times tangent x. Okay, very good. Okay. So if you forget to multiply by the derivative of box, it's pretty much all over. All over with the credit. Exactly. Secants cancel out and you get tangent x. Throw it into the formula. Square root of 1 plus this thing squared. Hey, you some butter. Yeah, this one was super easy. Add up all of these tiny pieces yeah. from... Now, what are my limits going to be? Is it going to be from 0 to pi over 4 or 0 to natural log 2 over 2? 0 to pi over 4. Why? Because yeah, because you're doing the integral in terms of x, so you go from x1 to x2. That's why I gave you both coordinates to see if you understand which one. Yes. Like hey, you somebody. And what's the square root of uh, secant squared x? Absolute, Absolute value of secant x, but on this interval it's positive, so no need. Hey, this is on the list. Try it. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> I got it. Okay, Hanuman, redeem yourself. Natural log, absolute value of secant x plus tan x. <laughs> tan, how can we all know that? Uh, Believe me, <laughs> you know I'm going to test you on everything. You know, right? Go ahead, yeah. use substitution, integration by part, fraction. trick substitution, partial fraction. Well, are you partial serious? Fractions. Partial fraction? Oh, God. You That's know it's going to be there. Trick. You know. <laughs> Because I'm a teacher, and a teacher's job is to test you on things. I always forget what goes on the top. Zero to, well, look at the homework and trick substitution, and zero people got it, even though we're BC. Yeah, trick Remember? substitution is harder. Dude, trick substitution, you just literally got to think about it. No, <laughs> we already went over this. Partial fractions is easier than trick substitution cool. in general. Okay, plug in the top number, go. Root 2 plus 1. See, I can do this. Obviously. I can do this in my sleep. <laughs> you guys gotta do it when you're away. You can do it in your dog. Well, you the one plus zero. That's zero. There's your answer, man. That's zero. Easy. Zero is my Okay, I can guarantee you it's not gonna be quite this it's easy. It's always natural at root two plus one. Not always. Sometimes it's two plus root three. Okay, number oh. seven. Another trick, if they're synthetic, always check two before you check one. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to concentrate here. Really? Yeah, I'm trying to concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> so, three P plus three cosine two P. Okay, there we go. It says if V is one, find the displacement of the particle from T equals... So how do you compute displacement? Integral twice. The integral... The integral of the velocity from 0 to 3. That's all you have to do. Well, if you know acceleration, how do you compute velocity? Integral. Anti, yeah, antiderivative. So what is the antiderivative of this? Is it just negative cosine 3t? No. Oh, my. No, because I left the space for the two-thirds. And is the antiderivative of this just sine 2t? No. No, because no, I left the space for the three halves. And then there's a plus c. How do I figure out what that c is? That's why I gave you an initial condition, V of 0 is 1. Let's see if we can do this in our head. If I plug in 0 here, what do you get? Negative 2 thirds. If I plug in 0 here, you get 0. What is negative 2 thirds plus 0? Negative 2 thirds. What do I have to add to negative 2 thirds to get 1? 5 thirds. No, you don't have to do it in your head. You can just work it all out, but you better get plus 5 thirds there. So, I have to integrate this from 0 to 3. So, you guys know how to integrate this from 0 to 3? Can, no. Can. You find the antiderivative of this, which is 
Is it just negative sine 3 t? No, I left the space for the two nines. What's the antiderivative of that? Is it just negative cosine 2 t? No, 3 fourths plus 5 thirds t from 0 to 3. I'm going to let you guys compute that. You guys can do that. Wait. Plug in 3, 0, and subtract. Okay, I'm not doing it. Part B. Find the total distance traveled from 0 to 3. Oh, that's a whole different story. Let me ask you that. Um, let me ask you, is the, is the answer on the bottom in decimals? Or use calculus. Oh, yeah. Because I'm thinking, if you're going to do this by hand, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, so all you have to do is to find the total distance traveled is to integral from 0 to 3 of the absolute value of this thing, dt, and just punch it in on your calculator. No, cause no, it would be crazy to figure out when to make a number line for that without a calculator. Yeah. You can try. Guess and check. I don't think. <laughs> guess and check. Guess and check. It's, it's possible. Yeah, it's can possible. You like four points. Okay, <laughs> well, number eight. Okay, pay attention to this problem. This problem's on the test. Well, all of them. I put that on my AD test. They can do it. Yeah, they're smart. Y equal natural log x. Y equal x squared minus 4x plus 3. Okay, let's just draw this picture. Now, of course, you get to use a calculator on this problem. So, just graph it on your calculator. So, Y equal natural log x looks like this, right? Boom. This is a parabola. If you factor it, the x-intercepts are 1 and 3. So, 1 and 3, and it's a parabola opening upward. <laughs> like that. Okay? So, here is the region. Can I, how, do you, how do I compute the area of this region? You gotta find where they intersect. What is this? One. One. Where is here? Three, four. Oh. Three something. We don't know, so that's why you gotta use your calculator. <laughs> calculate this intersection point. Take that x coordinate and store it, because you're probably gonna use it. Who did it? What did, what did it come out to? Three point five zero. Five zero. One. One. Did everybody get that? But you gotta use all the decimal places now. So store it. You guys are just nodding, yeah? And then what's gonna happen? We're more raw. We're more raw. We're So how do you compute this area? Top minus bottom. Which one's on the top? Natural log x minus x squared minus 4x plus 3. Please put the parentheses there. Multiply by the dx. Add it up from 1. You know what? I'm gonna store this into a. Store it into a so you can just put a there. How do you do that from the graph? It's when you go out, you, can just you gotta go back. Okay, once you do it on your graph, this the x coordinate of this point is stored in x, and the y coordinate is stored in y. Right? Stored so you gotta go back to the run matrix over. mode, type in x, press enter, and then the number pops out, and then you store it in the a. Is it stored in the alphabetical x or the variable x? Variable. It's the same, no, it's the same thing. Alphabetical. Not it's in the, the same. same. It's the same thing. Same thing. Okay, anyway, you get this answer. Yeah. What do you want to call this? B. Okay, let's call it B. So we store this into B, whatever it is. Now, we are going to cut this with a vertical line, and it's going to divide it into two equal regions. Okay, you have to figure out what that value is. Where you draw. No, this is on the AP exam every single year. A, B, and B, C. What? It's Did I really K. hear that, Yoshida? It's 1 to K. Integral from 1 to K. 1 to K of top minus bottom. I'm going to try to concentrate here. 1 multiplied by the dx. What is that? Now, if this line divides it into two equal regions, B over 2. It should equal B over 2. That's right. Should it equal to half of that area? Okay, now. How do you solve for k? How do you figure out what the k is? Well, you actually have to compute the antiderivative of this, because that's how you compute integrals, right? Now, let's see if we remember anything. I told you guys to memorize this, because when you go and take the integral b at your school, this is something you just have to know. The integral of natural log x, try and redeem yourself. Kanashiro, you're next. <laughs> Moriguchi. Angelo. You're. OK, Yoshida. X natural log X minus e. oh. yeah. X natural log X minus X. Okay, now if you don't remember that, then integration by parts. 
Are you serious? Uh, okay. Somebody like, what, what you, what? do you, DB? Oh gosh, you could, please help me. Please help me. This is BC, <laughs> right? You shouldn't put on this. <laughs> this is BC, right? Okay, let's pretend we don't know it. We don't know it. <laughs> so you There's put no an extra log text here. Okay, remember integration by parts, because this is look familiar. Oh, okay. And over here, you take the derivative of, to go from here to here, you take the antiderivative. So the integral of u dv, which is the thing we're trying to find, is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. What's this times this? Dx. Yeah. Yeah. Dx. So isn't that x ln x minus x plus c? Yes. See, the antiderivative of natural log x is x natural log x minus x. I have it memorized because I want to do well in the integral piece. <laughs> okay, now here, I'm going to test you right now. Well, well, What's the integral of secant cubed x dx? Remember I told you guys Tomorrow you're next. Oh. Oh. Uh, can you remember something at least? Nope. Tomorrow? Secant x tangent. There's the uh, natural log absolute value of secant x plus tangent x at the end. Okay, that's, that's correct. Abe, can you remember anything? I'm trying to Google it. No. <laughs> Why Google it when this is the third time it's coming up in this class? So you probably wrote it down twice before, right? Yeah. Didn't write it down it's once. Yeah. <laughs> it's one half secant x tangent x plus one half that. I'm looking up. And again, if you if you refuse to memorize this one, which comes up in in multivariable calculus multiple times, then you better know how to do it. You got to do integration by parts. Solving for the yeah, solving for the unknown oh. integral. Okay, and then the rest. Come on, what's the rest going to be? Minus one third x cubed plus two x squared minus three x. Did I do that correctly? No. Okay. <laughs> no. Yeah, but no, no, we don't need to write the plus c because this is definite. Okay, plug in the top thing. Go. K, k natural log k, k minus k, k minus one third k, k cubed <laughs> plus two k squared minus three k. Minus, plug in the bottom number, 0 minus 1 minus 1 third plus 2 minus 3. That has to equal to v over 2, correct? Yep. How do you solve any equation on your calculator? Make one side zero. You make one side 0. So you bring this over, you graph it on your calculator, and wherever it crosses the x-axis, that's your answer. Bro, this is a... I, I'm telling you, this is an involved problem, but if AB can do it, BC should be able to How many people in AB? I would say like two thirds. Well, whoever did the practice test, they can do it. But then the other people, they don't do the practice test. And there's no need. I'm the man. The man doesn't need to do practice tests. That's when they go crashing down. So, yes, you can understand it. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. What about two days from now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why you have to actually, actually have to do it on your own okay, to one. cement it in your brain. <laughs> of it. Where did you get that from? The high I'm Japanese. No, no, no. No, that's from the Tonight Show. Hey yo. What? Yeah. There you go. She said hi yo, yeah. but you, what you're thinking of is no, hey yo. You're thinking of Jai Ho. <laughs> right? Hey yo. Hey yo. <laughs> okay. This oh, Jai Ho from. Ah, so I'm not going there. Okay, finally, somebody caught up. This problem is on the test. I haven't decided yet whether to make it calculator active or non calculator. Calculator. But wh whatever, whichever one it is, you have to be able to find the anti derivative, right? So that you can plug in the top and the bottom. Is there a way to do that in the calculator? Hmm? Is there a way to find the antiderivative in the calculator? Well, if you had a TI-89, that thing has a computer algebra Why? system. So you, it'll actually... Why do we get this? No, so if you had, if you had a TI-89, you could punch this in and then you'll spit this out as the answer. Why? If you have a computer algebra system, it's called oh, CAS. My, my sister had a TI-89. Computer algebra system. system. Yeah. Oh. We made like a program that would compute the midpoints okay. and then divide it into two equal sections and use that. that okay, but I can easily thwart that. You know how I thwart it? 
This, and this is how the AP exam thwarts it. Okay, so you have your region, whatever the region is. What if you divide it so that the ratio is 2 to 1? Or oh, what if you make a program yeah. where it's x to y? Okay, then that would be okay. Like exactly. No, because sometimes they don't, they don't make it exactly into two. They make it like, oh, they you yeah. split it so the ratio is two to one. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you guys are just nodding your head like, yeah. yeah. We're remorals. Jai, hello. I, you know what? I, would, I actually wish you guys were remorals. On the shark? Yeah. You will attach yourself to the big shark and then you feed on the remains. But no, some of you just don't attach yourself to anything. I'm hungry. Where's the food? Please, somebody put food, food right in front of me. No, not even in front. You gotta put it in the mouth. And use use their hands to make it. Okay, number nine. I don't have to. This is a calculator problem. This is a. Oh look, right there. It says no graphic calculator allowed for problems one through six. Right there. It says it right there. Okay, I'll do number nine. Oh gosh. Okay, length of curve. What is what is the derivative of e to the x? Okay. So put it in for the square root of one plus e to the x squared, which of course is e to the two x dx, add up all these pieces from negative one, to one. negative one to one. Punch that in the calculator and that's going to spit out the answer. Now, I, I'm going to tell you right now, on the test, this one is going to be no calculator. Yeah. What? And I'm going to, let's review something right now because there were three of them on the homework, but then some of you just completely forgot about it. Uh, Wait, yeah, negative one to x of um, well, what, what was on the homework? Tangent t dt, yeah? yeah? Yeah. Okay, what if they give you the function as an integral? Fundamental oh, theorem, theorem of calculus part, part one. one. Thank you. You gotta use the fundamental theorem of calculus oh, yeah, part one. Put it and how do you do that? You, you take this and plug it in there, so you get tangent x, and then you gotta times it by the derivative of that, which is one. Yeah, you guys are nodding now, but I know what's gonna happen on the test. I'm, I'm, gonna, ch I'm gonna change that to a 2t or something. How does that change? Is that Are you serious? <laughs> then this would be tangent 2x, and then you got to multiply by the derivative of 1. Oh. Yeah, you messed it up. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. I changed my, I'm going to make that 2x. <laughs> then you get 1. I knew what he was trying to do. I knew what he was trying to do. <laughs> Stop making fun of me. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. Uh, then you know what to do with it? Yeah. No. Uh, well, don't worry, I'm going to make it so that you can do it by hand. Okay, uh, finally, number 10. Are you serious? This is AB. I got that off the AP, AB exam. I didn't read the problem. It looked pretty long, so I thought it would be hard. This is the way they. Yeah, well, yeah. This is the way. <laughs> this is <laughs> okay, they give you a rate. Look, if they give you a rate, this, now you're you're used to what kind of rate are you used to? Miles per hour. What was the one on the quiz? Gallons per minute. Okay, but this one is people per hour. So people arrive at an amusement park at a rate. This is an actual AP problem. Okay. So if you are given a rate, how do you figure out how much was done? Integral. Yeah, you do an integral. So if this is the rate at which people are entering the park, now we've got to read the whole thing though. Yeah, I'm still ready to read. For 9 to 23 with the hours is okay. At time t equal 9, there are no people in the park. That's because it's just open. The price of admission is five fifteen dollars until 5 p.m. After 5 p.m., the price of admission is $11. How many dollars are collected from admissions to the park on a given day? Round your answer up to the nearest whole number. Okay, so this is the rate at which people enter the park. How do I figure out how much money I'm going to get? Well, obviously you're going to do two integrals, right? Because you have two admission prices. So, for the $15, you're going to multiply $15 by how many people entered the park from when? 9 to 5. 9 to 5. Okay, so. I'm going to integrate this. This is a rate. This is people per hour. I got to multiply that by hours. 
So you get people. And what are the limits of integration? What is 9 o'clock? 9. 9. And what is 5 o'clock? 17. 17. Right? So this will give you how many people entered the park from 9 o'clock to 5 o'clock. That times it by $15 per ticket, right? Per person. And then, what about from 5 o'clock and when does it close? 23. Midnight. No? Oh, 23. Wait. After midnight. It's probably yes. No, that's what the... <laughs> so three hours nine, after midnight. So nine hours wait, wait, after midnight. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess it ends at 23 then. The park closes at 11 o'clock. I guess you just have to assume that. That's confusing. Okay, this is the rate multiplied by that, and you add it up, what? 17 to 23, and then you multiply that by 11. You guys can figure it out. This is a calculator problem. Because yes. look at that function. That's an ugly function. Easy. Now, here, let me give you a tip for those of you using a calculator. This is what I would do. I would go y1 equals this, uh, 15,600. I would punch this into my calculator. t squared minus 24t plus 160. And then you know what? Then I punch this into my calculator. Just put y1 here, dx, and then put y1 dx there. You define this on your calculator as y1. You know in the graphing mode? Yeah. You Where's define y1? this as y1. And then when you go to the run matrix mode to punch in the integrals, you just put y1 here and y1 there. You don't have to type in this whole thing. Where's y1? Uh, I think you go, you got to get the Y and then you put 1 if you have a Casio. But if on a TI, Y1 is in variables. The syntax Yes. Okay, then. Y1. Bars. Bars. Yeah, for TI, bars. You're going to bars. But for Casio, it's a little stranger. Do you rather just punch it in the more? It's too late to do it. If now. it's too Okay, oh, just for that I'm gonna give you a really ugly one. Okay. Yeah. So how do you how do you set I'm trying to figure out where you get Y1? Options? No, VARS, right there, VARS. Did I tell you VARS does not stand for varsity? It stands for variables. Bars. No, because some of you would think like, oh, I'm on the JV, so I can't press that button. What <laughs> oh, is that? Why? Bars, <laughs> graph, Bars. Look right there. Graph, graph, Y. 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 Right there, get Y. And then you press the number one. Y1. Whoa, Whoa where did I get seven? Whoa. It's too much to remember. <laughs> just, 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 just punch it in. Yeah. Yeah. No, for real, because sometimes on the AP exam, the, the function they give you is just horrendous. You don't want to you want to keep punching in it over and over. Believe me. Okay, any other questions on this? Video. No, because I, I have a feel I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> Thanks, I guess. Oh, there's some movie. I did not do this. Well, how many more minutes do we have on the movie? I think we have a ton. Ten. No, we have a ton. Okay, we're not going to watch the movie now. Okay, okay, let's just play a quick game then. I made this over vacation this game. Because I had to make. Um, why? I tested on uh, the students first, and then I tested on my immediate family. But then, when it then when we have the big Christmas party, then my immediate family cannot play because they already did it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So then I have to make a new game. Okay, we'll play boys against girls. We'll play it to two fifty-five, and then the winner no, can go. The loser got to stay to three or five. Me too, we have a faculty meeting, but look, I'm willing to stay. Assuming we get a Every Monday we have a faculty meeting. And how much? So I did point eight eight five of 9. Oh, good thing uh, Econ is super far away, yeah? So we just need a, like, 
73. Okay, are you ready? Oh, so is it just now, did you play, did we play, uh, we have one. did we play movie villains in this class? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I made a new one. 88.5 plus one. Oh, darn it. Hey, guys. Yeah. Like so okay, we just played a trio club. No one has to say the trio club. Yeah, Sarah. Yeah, uh, still still trio. Okay, so movie villains. This is these are movie characters. Oh wait, wait! Stop the video. We don't we don't need to be video. Okay, nah, I think they we want to play. What if he wants to play along? Yeah, but you can't.